All right, let's get started with a little introduction. Harassment in general, now I'm talking any harassment, I, I don't just mean sexual harassment at this point, is a form of employment discrimination. And that harassment can violate many different federal rules and regulations. It could violate Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. Now, you guys may have heard of Title VIII, which went on to create the Fair Housing. This is Title VII about employment. It could violate the Age Discrimination Employment Act if that harassment is about being an old person. Or it could violate the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, the ADA, if it deals with a physical or mental handicap. Now, harassment becomes unlawful where one of two things happen. It is an enduring offensive conduct becomes a condition of continued employment. I will also add or actual initial employment. Or it's a conduct that is severe and pervasive enough to create a work environment that a reasonable person would consider intimidating, hostile, or abusive. Now we're going to talk a little later about some court cases, but the one that I hear a lot of is when somebody says, oh, well, you can't even comment on Sally's nice dress or Bob's new suit. That's sexual harassment. Actually, by definition, it is not. It is Harassment is an enduring offensive conduct, or it's a conduct that is severe and pervasive, which means ongoing. Now, if I said, hey, Susie, that's a really nice dress you're wearing today, you look great, that would not be considered sexual harassment, unless I use some different tones. <laughs> if I said, hey, Sally, that sure is a really hot look at it, make sure blah, 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 then you have a whole different scenario, all right? These laws, the anti-discrimination laws, prohibit harassment against people that are involved in that, this particular situation. So not only against the person that may be filed that you cannot retaliate them for filing a sexual harassment against you. You also cannot file against or retaliate against somebody that testified for that person or somebody that was in the investigation of that criminal, uh, of that sexual abuse case. You get what, what I'm saying? I guess I'm not being clear. If they file a case, you can't retaliate against them. So the fact that someone's filed a sexual harassment or any harassment case against you is an issue. If you retaliate by making them, oh, you're not going to work third shift for that, or I'm cutting your hours because I don't want you here, you're a troublemaker. Those could be retaliation techniques and also could be construed uh, as a violation of any of these rules. So you can't retaliate or you shouldn't retaliate. Well, you actually shouldn't be in trouble to begin with, but you actually can't retaliate against them either. All right. So there are many different types of workplace harassment. It could be based upon race, gender, religion, disability, sexual orientation, age, personal harassment, including physical harassment. There's also what they call power harassment, like a boss exerting power over their uh, employee. Psychological harassment, online harassment, retaliation harassment, and then obviously sexual harassment. Those are what the different areas that we talk about. It could be any of those. Specifically, when they're talking about sexual harassment, most lawsuits fall in one of two types. The first type of sexual harassment is what they call quid pro quo. Prid qu Quid pro quo means something for something or this for that. 
So in other words, you offer an employee something in return for sexual favors, like, like maybe you give them a promotion or uh, going out on a date. Um, maybe you give them the first chance to pick days off if they go on a date with you. So you're giving them something for something, quid pro quo. The other type of sexual harassment is called a hostile work environment, which actually could fit in many different other types of harassment as well. A hostile work environment is one in which the employee doesn't feel safe and cannot be productive due to the ongoing pervasive harassment that is being exerted over them. If the sexual harassment is persistent or severe enough, it would create what they call a hostile work environment. So typically, when a sexual harassment case gets filed, it's either based on one of those two things. My boss is asking me for a date and will only give me a promotion if I date him. Or, hey, it's just an ongoing thing and I can't avoid it and now I can't work and it's a hostile work environment. So those are typically the two that we are going to talk about today, quid pro quo and the hostile work environment. All right, so let me change slides and we'll be good to go.